and I never realized how young he was, how youthful he was, when he stepped out with that vision that was in his heart. And it's because of that, not that my dad ever said that he was anybody or that he could do anything, but the cry of his heart was always, Lord, if there could be a place where you could be who you want to be and where you could do what you want to do, well then, I'm available. And it's because of that availability before the Lord, one life who is willing to step out in faith, that we're here this afternoon. And I look at individuals, I look at lives, I look at families, I look at ministries, and my heart is touched as we gather together. And I hear that same heart cry coming forth today. I see that same availability in your lives that I, I believe was at the foundation of, of, of Pinecrest being founded. And before we receive communion together this afternoon, I just want to play a short video of my dad about six minutes long uh, where he's sharing a few thoughts on communion. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Is there a way to dim the lights? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you now for that beautiful touch of your presence. And we're believing and asking, Lord, that it will substantially increase. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. When the multitudes came, Jesus fed them. Five loaves, two fishes. He broke, gave to the disciples, the disciples to the people, they ate to the full. There were 12 basketfuls left over. And later they came back and they said, Lord, do it again. That was tremendous. And always as in the word, there's a progression of revelation. Jesus said, I have something better. I have something beyond that which will, of the earthly, that will sustain your bodies. Because you're called to something higher. And if you'll eat of my flesh and drink my blood, you'll live to the fullness of all that I have for you. And they scorned, they ridiculed, and they left. And Jesus could not explain except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. He couldn't explain it. They accused him of, of teaching cannibalism, literally. And they scorned him and ridiculed him. But later, the evening before he paid the penalty upon the cross, he took bread and he said, this is my body. And he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood. Take and eat. Someone asked me recently, is it proper or right to take communion at home? And the answer is yes, it is proper. It's very proper. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you do show, S-H-E-W, show the Lord's death. That word shoe means to demonstrate the value. And if I'm taking communion, Jesus said, if you'll eat my flesh and drink my blood, you'll live. So if I'm taking of the very life of the Lord into my life in faith, for Jesus is the tree of life. He's a root on the dry ground. He's the tree of life. To the world, very unattractive. But to us, extremely attractive. It's 
for redemption and the revelation of his presence. If you'll eat my flesh and drink my blood, and very simply, we believe that we partake the tree of life and we live. And if I'm partaking of his life and I'm dying like everyone else, I'm not demonstrating anything. For the Lord said, if we're rightly discerning his body, rightly discerning, that has nothing to do with forgiving somebody and being sure we don't have all against them. That, that's all good and we need to do that. But discerning his body means that we recognize that we're partaking of his very life, his body, his blood. We're partaking. And if I recognize that and I simply believe what he said, this is my body. He did not say this is a symbol or an emblem. He said what? This is my body. He took the cup. He did not say, this is an emblem of my blood. He said, this is my blood. I look and I see bread and the fruit of the vine. So I have to make a choice. Do I believe what I see or do I believe what Jesus said? Well, I choose to believe what? What Jesus said. So I simply believe what he said. This is my body. I'm partaking of his very life. And in ascension, Jesus became the power of an endless life. We're living in the time of the redemption of our bodies. The last days, the last enemy be overcome is death. That's going to happen here. And it's going to happen through communion, through partaking of his very life when we receive that further revelation. And communion is released from a ritual, a religious ritual and becomes a reality in our life. As often as you do this, you shall demonstrate the value of Jesus' death in your behalf. Back in the 1960s, I used to stop by a small church every so often. No matter when I stopped, or how often I stopped, they started every service without exception. Every service, if they had 50 services in a week, they had communion 50 times. They started every service with communion. And I noticed I sat there, I just stopped by them and then went on my way afterwards because there was something special. The church is no longer there. But I still remember it like it was a few weeks ago. There was something special about that, just a small fellowship. Every meeting started with communion and there was something different about it. I sensed something different and I asked the Lord and what I'm saying came by revelation out of that prayer, out of that desire. I felt there was something different about that church and when I asked, I got the right answers. We're partaking of the very life, the very one they had understanding. Yeah. 